Before you start on that one, let me just chat about, again, what literal relationships are, what they help us do, and that will give you a bit more meaning behind what your, your worksheet there. Yeah? Okay? So, let's have a look at this one. Linear relationships. Right. Like I said, linear relationships lend themselves to lines. It's, what, it's in the name, right? We're looking at graphing straight lines. But in order to do that, it's sometimes easy to just say, oh, I'm just going to draw a straight line and that's my line. Right? I have to give it a name somehow. The easiest way to draw a line is actually by plotting a whole series of points. And if you do that, you can graph a straight line. And that's actually what you're doing with your equation. Let me show you why. When I gave you that equation, right, what was the matchstick equation? Can someone chat it out for me? What is that matchstick equation that we got? What was the rule that we found? Yeah, Coda. Uh, two, uh, wait, times two yep. plus, oh no, it was minus one. Is it times two minus one or times two? Minus? Oh no, I think it was plus one. I think it's plus, one. yeah, times two plus one, right? And I said that we can call this y. Let's say y is the number of matchsticks we need, x is the number of triangles we have. So this is what we call a linear relationship. That's what it is. And what does it help us? What does it help us talk about? It helps us talk about, right, identifying a relationship between x and y. It actually also helps you plot points, right? How does that work? Generally, they'll give you a table, and the table looks something like this. And this table says, all right, if x has a particular value, what is y going to equal to? All right? So for example, if they start from x is equal to 0, yeah, and you put 0 into here, what that's saying is, all right, let's go. And when a number and a letter next to each other, we know that means, OK, so it's going to be 2 times 0 plus 1. What is that equal to? Just one. So when x is equal to one, y is equal to one. Okay, can you see that? There's a lot of working out there, but basically all you're doing is you're saying, all right, if x is equal to one, let's replace, oh wait, I wrote it in the wrong spot. Okay, sorry. When x is equal to zero, then y is equal to one. That's all it's saying, okay? Let's try the next one together, right? The next one, when x is equal to one, when x, uh, when x is equal to one, what are we gonna get? Yeah, 2 times 1 plus 1, what's that going to be? 3. There you go. Where am I going to put that? Yeah, after a certain point, you might notice there's a pattern, and we looked at this pattern last time. So what was the pattern, Riley? It goes, up by two. it goes up by 2 each time. So after a certain point, I'm going to cheat a little bit. You don't actually, Jackson, have to keep putting it in. What can I do? I can just notice the pattern and go, okay, so I go up by 2 each time. Okay. What do these help us do? These help us plot points. Can you plot these points for me now? This is how far across I go, and this is how far up. How do I remember that again? Um, you climb before, crawl before you climb, or X is across, Y goes up to the sky. So let's go plot them out. Zero, one, one, three, two, five, and then seven, uh, bleh, three, seven. Yours will be a lot neater than mine. There we go. Plot them out for me, see what they look like. Let's see if it is actually that line. Miss Lux, you want an announcement for us? No, she doesn't. She's got a question for me, which I don't know if I can answer. Is that all that works? <laughs> Minimum cut is the maximum. So I'm all right with that. Let's come back. And just to make sure we're on the same page. What does this table of values help us do? It helps us plot all of these points here. Right? Look, let's have a look. Zero, one. There's one point there. 1, 3, there's one point there. 2, 5, there's one point there. Wait, did I do that right? Yeah, 3 and then 7, there we go. And then what we can do is I think in your textbooks, they'll actually ask you to connect them all up as a straight line. How come we can connect them up as a straight line? Well, this is actually something that Liz was talking about before, and she said, hang on, what if there's a point in between these two? And you can actually plot them. And you can find out that they'll lie in between there as well. They'll lie on that line. So if you put in 0 0.5 here, well, 0 0.5 times 2, that's just 1. Plus 1 is just 2. Right? So. Sorry? Oh, do they? Oh, interesting. So you, can, you could actually plot that point too if you wanted to, right? Um, 
But in general, we only need a few of these points before we're confident, okay, what is this line going to look like? That's what this is talking about. That's what a linear relationship is. So we plot them out and we get some lines, okay? What's the next one you've got? You've got y is equal to 4x. Is that question two? Yes. So let's look at y equals to 4x. So we've got our table out again. And they start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And they've given you a bit of a hint. They've told you, okay, look, what you need to calculate for me is you need to take in x and you need to, whatever that is, you need to multiply it by 4, right? So, they do a hint, they can say 0 times 4, 1 times 4, 2 times 4, 3 times 4, and so on and so forth, and we get this little pattern going on, right? That's really just your 4 times tables, isn't it, right? We've got 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, right? The important thing, though, is that if you're asked to graph this, that you recognize that these are your x values and these are your y values. So you could actually write them out as what we call ordered pairs. You could write them out as 0, 0, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12, and so on and so forth, 4, 16. These would all be points along the line. That's how we connect them all up, okay? Equals to x. So y equals to x plus 3 is your rule. And they give you a nice little table there so it's all really easy to do. The table looks like this. So the graph looks like this, sorry. The table, what does it start from? Uh, zero. So x and y. And zero, one, two, three, four. And so you can put that into your equation. So zero plus three. Again, you don't have to necessarily write the work out. If you're comfortable with this, right? You can just say, well, zero plus three is just three. One plus three is just four. Two plus three is five. And again, we can see the pattern that's going on here. It goes up by one. It's a much easier pattern than before, yeah? The important thing to take away, though, is recognizing what do all these represent. These actually represent points, right? So what is this point? This point is 0, 3. That's your first point. So you start from 0, then you go up 3. There's one point there. What's the next one? You go... Oh, it's 2x plus 1. Oh, sorry. What's the next point? I've got... Uh, four. One, four. 1, 4. So go across 1, up 4. That's a bit over here. Across 2, up 5. Across 3, up 6, and so on. And here's our rule that we're getting, and we're expecting a line because we're looking at linear relationships. And there you go. There's a nice line there. And because it's a line, I'm going to use a ruler to connect them up, okay? Any questions about that one? Now mine didn't even connect up fairly, so I'm going to cheat a little bit, draw my points a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs>